I am so happy. I'm thrilled to be able to welcome you to the greatest panel you've ever seen uh, and to welcome Elle Fanning and Nicholas Holt, who are going to talk to us about the great today. So the first thing I'm curious about, uh, I know, Elle, that you were attached to this early and were pitching it, you're part of the sort of, and I'm curious what it was about this project that you were like, we're in, I'm doing it. We got to make this happen. I mean, it was pretty immediate, I'd have to say. It wasn't much of um, a contemplation in my mind at all. Um, the interesting thing is, obviously, um, Tony had, had, I think, seen some things I had been in and thought of me for this, and it was it was a pilot. Well, was it? I might have read the script actually. It was it, a film script. Originally. It was, yeah. It was like, I think it was the script <laughs> <laughs> um, at that point. Um, and the favorite he had just done with Nick, but it hadn't come out yet, which was interesting because I had I didn't have anything to tonally compare the script to. Which is it's so distinctive. I can yeah. imagine it being yeah hard to imagine, but also it's it's hard. Yes, it, I don't know if it was hard to imagine, weirdly, because Tony's words are so specific and direct that he puts his point, his point is so across, you know, it's just, it's right there, and it's very unapologetic, and it was honestly, I didn't know that this is what I was looking for, but it was this role and this series is like everything that I was looking for, and growing, because uh, I was, how old, I think I was like, 19 or 20, I think 20 when I did the pilot and then, you know, so on. Now I'm 23. It's like, I get very, um, I, I, thinking about this week or this weekend, like with the season two coming out, I get very emotional, emotional, like talking about the series because Catherine, she just means a lot and we all love each other on the cast. Like you can just tell, and everyone says that and comes up here and says that, but it's true. <laughs> like, see, we, and you know, it's not true, right? Yeah. <laughs> Cheap gags. <laughs> yeah, pulling That's out the heartstrings a little bit. Um, but it's just, Catherine, I just saw her completely. And Tony and I, I met him, and he's just the greatest like, genius ever. And I knew Nick was going to be in it at that point as well. And, um, yeah, I just hoped people, you know, wanted to buy it for whatever. I think it's worked. Really Congrats. I think it, we, we made it happen. It's, it's happened. Um, I So it is... It's not really a period drama in a lot of ways because it's so modern, but it really is a costume drama. I mean, like the the idea, the set and the clothes and the space of it are so gorgeous and so detailed. Um, they just watched the coronation scene. You have an incredible costume in that scene. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> so predictable. Cheap. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> I'm curious, actually, for both of you, how much something like costumes are a part of like how you develop the character and like how you understand who that person is. Okay, I'll go first. Yeah, go. Uh, the uh, the interesting thing for from Peter's perspective, in like in terms of that coronation scene, it's like obviously he's not overjoyed about handing over the throne, and there's little things like he he puts little sparkles in his hair for that day, and he's kind of always trying to one-up you subtly. There's a scene later on in the season where we have a baby shower and my outfit for that is completely outrageous. It's incredible. I'm trying to show just how fun I am. I've got feathers and lots of color it, and a dress. It's beautiful. Um, but I feel like that's the great thing about the, the costumes and the design, but also the, you know, the, the heel that you have on the shoe and all these little things that just change how you walk and how you move and make you feel like the character and uh, from that era. Um, but you can talk more about that coronation outfit, which was incredible. Spectacular. Spectacular, yeah. I mean, um, Sharon Long is our costume designer this season, and she worked so, I mean, on everything. Every, you know, the background, art, the, the, the design that goes into this show. And also, those are all sets. They're not location. They're built. Um, and our production designer is, uh, I'm in all, like Jillian Anderson, she had watched the first season, of course, and when she came on, she could not get over that these that this was not on location and not wow. in she, and she would, did not think it was real and she would, she was like like a mother like 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 I don't know taking like it's photos of everything like on the set because she was so flabbergasted it has to be amazing <laughs> like going around. to impress Jillian Anderson. I know it felt good. You're like oh, Fran our 
product or, or for who designed everything. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, incre- like Dear Diary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I yeah. do wonder. I was just gonna ask. I'm curious. Like everyone's costumes are so great. I wonder sometimes if you look at other people's like the various costumes they have, and like there's any that you are particularly fond of. Mine personally. Is that is Aunt Elizabeth the bugs that she draws on her face? I'm obsessed with them. They're so great and weird. Yeah, I think they, Lou Coles, who does a uh, or the makeup, she I think it's felt that they like cut out the design and then place them on the girls' faces. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. I think it, that comes from right. when they. You had some on at the baby shower. Y- yeah, when they used to uh, have lead in the powder and stuff, and it would eat away at the skin, your skin. So then you'd put those Love be- that. beauty marks on, on to cover spots. to cover <laughs> the holes in your skin. But then they also meant they also mean different things depending on what the shape of the felt cover up is, and also where it's placed on your face. I don't know what they are, but you can look into that <laughs> if you're interested. I we should bring that back, not the lead, obviously. It'll be my later talk at 10:30 <laughs> this evening if you can make it. <laughs> Um, food is one of my other most favorite things about the show. And I feel like if you were to count up all of your lines of dialogue, Nick, like a measurable percentage of them would just be descriptions of food. I am, well, first of all, I want to know, like, how much of it is made? How much of it do you actually eat? I eat most of it and really enjoy it. I love eating on, on set. Um, uh, and I think that definitely comes from Tony. He's a real foodie. Huh. Um, so, uh, and he's got, yeah, Peter is as well. And so it's, a lot of the time, it actually is me and Rhiannon, and the script supervisor, trying to work out how to pronounce things because I, I don't speak good French and a lot of the food's French or based in... And so suddenly it's like us trying to figure out how to pronounce these weird culinary yeah. things that Tony's come up with. <laughs> um, but it's great that eating is very good on set. It seems Leads like it. Apart from once we had ice cream... Um, and me and Belinda, who plays Aunt Elizabeth, yeah. we were so excited about a scene where we just got to eat ice cream, but it was actually made out of like lard and something else. It was so just it wouldn't melt. W- so yeah. it wouldn't melt on screen. I was like, th- that was like the closest I ever got to being really upset on s- oh, on, I'm so s- on set because I was like, this is ridiculous. We need. A-. And they did go and get real ice cream for me. They did. <laughs> yeah, because I can't, I can't like chew down lard yeah. and like color it. Like I'm loving it. Oh. Right. I mean, just trying to control your face as you put it. Oof. Even the texture. <laughs> what flavor ice cream did they get for you? Chocolate. Nice. <laughs> um, I. What's like? What is your favorite weird food that they have put in? Fr- I mean, the spreads are. I ate squirrel this year. No, you didn't. When? You ate squirrel? When? Yeah. How did they cook it? With the, with the thing. Yeah. Well, that's it. Kind of. the pilot, right? No. Uh, yeah, it's me- it was meant to be a rat, rat, but they didn't get me a rat. They got me a squirrel because kind of <laughs> once they're roasted and skinned and whatever, they kind of look similar, I guess. Um, and apparently, squirrel is a delicacy. But they asked like a while before. It was like months out from shooting the scene. They were like, "Do you mind eating squirrel?" And it's kind of one of those things. I was like, "Yeah, no, fine, whatever." And it got to the day, and I saw like the squirrel. I was, it was pretty. It was pretty gross that one. But the ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, Catherine has pregnancy cravings this yes, year. Yes, yes. So she likes to, uh, you know, the iron deficiency. She's sucking on rusty nails. She eats dirt. She eats dirt and uh, flower uh, rose petals as well. I think Seems better than the dirt. Yes, but the, ru- yeah, the rusty nail, I think we had one that was made of chocolate. And when I would suck on it, it looked too much like chocolate. Like it was coming off, so I was like, all right, just get it. We got a real one. Bring it in. <laughs> like, so I was just sucking on the real one. <laughs> Yeah, the dirt was not real, though. I think it was, like, mushed-up Oreos or something. Sure, yeah, okay. Yes. And the flower petals were marzipan, but then I think at some point, actually, I think they might have used the marzipan take, but at some point, I, they looked, it looked a little bit marzipan-y, so I had to, I was like, just bring in the real ones. It's <laughs> a commitment. <laughs> Stuff them in, then we're like, all right, let's wait. So you eat and spit it out. <laughs> incredible food, but also lard, nails, and squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Thinking back, actually, not so great. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, so you are, as you mentioned, pregnant from for the season. I have to ask about like the pregnancy prosthesis because it is like pretty convincing. There are so many parts where it feels like 
the fact that you can visually see that she is pregnant feels like such an effective, looming, like, time bomb. Mm -hmm. How did that change how you think about the character? I thought about it a lot. Um, obviously, I've never been pregnant, so I, I wanted to make sure that it seemed as real as possible in our world, and I think that Paul, the baby, represents so much, because it is a ticking time bomb of, she's, Catherine's a bit like, well, once, if I'm, being pregnant is keeping me alive, because Peter's so obsessed with becoming a father and loves the child so much that, okay, he won't kill me. Um, if, if, you know, Paul's inside. So it kind of, the baby's kind of this political <laughs> play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think that, but that makes Catherine, you know, okay, she has to be a mother to this child, but she's thinking of it in that way. So I, I definitely want, I don't think that Catherine, um, super m maternal until, and didn't, and didn't want to address the pregnancy, pregnancy until, you know, she had to, until it starts to kick her and she's kind of like, oh, right, there's a, there's a baby in there. You know, she's too busy thinking up other things and it's useful to her, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, but then again, okay, it's going to be a real human being, <laughs> so she's going to have to grapple with that and how to become a mother. But I, I was aware not to, I don't know, something that we talked about early on, not touching the stomach too much. I don't know, sometimes I feel like, also in movies too, when people are like always touching the stomach. Absolutely, yes. I was like, ah. I did, and I also don't think Catherine would care, so it was just like, Sharon really helped with the costumes too. Everything kind of became a little more umpire waist, a little flowier and practical. And I didn't try to acknowledge the baby until it was a scene that was kind of, okay, about the baby that I had to acknowledge it. Um, and yeah, every day I wore like, because I'm pregnant for a very long time, the whole season basically. And it grows and grows and the way you walk and everything. It was kind of weighted and, and then the prosthetic took like two hours to put on when we would actually see the flesh. And they told me they're, I, they're like, okay, this is what you would look like pregnant because... That's got to be weird. Yeah, I was so I was sending so many photos to like my sister and my mom. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, it looks so real. But um, yeah. yeah, that that was cool. I actually like that. Yeah, because they molded it to my body. So right. Fun. And then yeah, it completely changes the way you like walk and the way you move and yeah. and uh, as you're sort of other people are interact like you have to have a lot of sex. I imagine that then becomes a part of the as you are as you are sort of in these these relationships with each other. I, is it weird to have this like large thing that you have to maneuver around in these these very physical scenes? No, I was thinking about yeah. I don't think I had like any sex scenes with the belly. <laughs> I don't think. Well, other things maybe. Other things. A lot of other things. Actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> We're gonna see. Yeah, um, but the yeah, I, I think. But it, I, I think it added to yeah. Catherine so much in the physicality. She definitely changed. And of course, corsets. Funny, funny enough, I was like, great. I don't have to wear corsets this season. This is so amazing. They're like, no, they still wore them. Um, <laughs> over the pregnancy and then so we were gonna do a thing where it's like okay but still it would be over the bump so it wouldn't be tight and then they're like mm, the clothes don't look as good so I would wear a corset underneath the bump what yep every day <laughs> yeah Matt, like yeah so it, that actually kind of gave me this posture because she would be wearing a corset it was very 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 complicated yeah. the dedication <laughs> I am aghast yeah yeah okay no squirrel on that table, probably. Ham. No squirrel. Yeah. Interestingly, though, that, so the morning that morning they'd been like, "Oh, learn how to write Peter's name in Russian with a quill," and I'd done it. And, <laughs> and Elle saw my handwriting, like trying to attempt to do this, and like burst like out laughing. And I was like, oh, "Okay, well you do better then." And it turns out Elle's had calligraphy lessons <laughs> since she was like I don't know nine years old. Wow. And suddenly just like does the most beautiful handwriting of Catherine's name in Russian. And on the document, and there's me like, yeah, 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 I, felt, <laughs> I felt like an idiot. That's pretty good for the characters, though. It would be very be better. No, yeah. could not be better. Where was that shot? Like, what? Where is that field? Uh, Somewhere in where countryside. Hatfield House. Was in the it? fields outside Hatfield House, was I think. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. North London, basically. Yeah. What? I mean, how much of this season have you seen? How much have you had a chance to watch scenes like this? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it all, but I haven't. It had the um, visual effects weren't really in it, and it wasn't color and you know yeah. sound and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So it's. I mean, it's so fun to be able to watch like a scene like that. Um, just for like so much of the 
second season takes place on set, but you do have a couple of these moments where you're like out in fields and forests and things, and you do get this scope of like, they're there and they're making this very strange agreement that's like half running this. It's just hungry. <laughs> Half running the whole country and half like, this is about our marriage. And yeah. I think one of the reasons the show works so well is that you can, you're playing both of them at this, they are so united in the performance, the like massive governmental, like who's in charge of this thing, but also like, do you like me? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it seems like a joy to be able to develop as a television season where you get to develop that over time rather than having it be a film and you make it and it's done. This is a place these characters would not have been at the first, in the first season. How does it feel to like live with them and be able to get to this really interesting, strange place between them, to live with them over time? Um, I think that's kind of something that I was most excited about um, to, to do season two because mostly because of the relationship between Peter and Catherine and how complicated it is because you can tell that she is just trying so bad not to like him, you know? And, and there are times where he's so evil. Like that's what Nick is so brilliant at. Like, and everyone says it, everyone knows, like, it's true. Like, it's just there, he can do things so vile, but you, it's, you still love him and it comes from a place that's actually grounded and there's a backstory to it and you see the history and watching him and like my favorite scenes on set are always the ones that are with Nick. I mean, you know, one, I mean, everyone's incredible, but those meaty scenes that Tony writes that are so long and yeah. the back and forth and the banter and the rhythm and we've gotten into that groove now that we can explore that more than we could in the first season. So there's many of those in season two, um, especially in that like in his breakfast um, room is kind of their place where they go and really we're like oh when we get in there we love it because and it's just I don't know I love Nick so much like he just there's no one in the world that could play him there's no one that, like we're just we're very close and he yeah he, he's he's the best it's really the best honestly so he's so good it's particularly really fun the second the second season as well because as Peter's trying to become nicer, Catherine's getting all this power and realizing how difficult it is to be in that position. So it's really fun for me because uh, I'm watching a lot of what was vile about Peter yeah. the first season. I'm seeing a lot of, I'm being put on the back foot a lot by Catherine in a really funny way and a brilliant way by Elle as well in the scenes where it's just like a real joy to suddenly be on the receiving end of things in an odd way that's like, it's just, yeah, when we get into the breakfast room and we have those scenes, they're like, it's like little sparring matches basically between us as characters, but also as actors, we kind of yeah. push each other for the best yeah. and also encourage it. And then also there's like this really joyful thing when we, we both instantly sense when it's like the one where we've like got every beat yeah. as we imagined it sort yeah. of, or yeah. it was just firing on all cylinders. And that's like the best scene partner possible, yeah. imaginable, yeah. yeah. Because this is, I mean, this is the first, first time you guys have had a television project like that th th is this long so you really get to live with characters that you can sort of find new angles on I mean I think it then seems the other challenge is like well I've played this person for so long like where's the fresh yeah. thing is that a challenge I don't feel that way yet I don't I think like you were saying a bit of like how Catherine is weirdly morphing into Peter becoming a little more ruthless and learning that she kind of to be a leader, you have to make harsh decisions. And, and she's also not, she's not perfect. Like she has this beautiful kind of, that's why I liked her so much is she's kind of, she's messy and, and actually quite arrogant. And a lo this season, especially she's a bit, she talks too much. She might like, she does, <laughs> does. she talks too much. And, <laughs> and people, um, you know, people kind of start to actually turn against her a little bit. Um, and she gets challenged in that way. And, what fun that is, you know? Yeah. Oh, you can see it in the scene, right? She is suddenly being like, I'm in charge and I can say whatever I like. And, but she's also not sure how to do it. I think, I think Peter is so explicitly monstrous that it kind of hides 
the fact that Catherine is a little bit of a nightmare also. But now he's becoming a dad, so he's, like, so sweet and making things for the baby that aren't quite, like, meant for babies, but they're still sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it just it seems like such an interesting opportunity to be able to, like, flip the dynamic and find new ways to play with how they interact with one another. Um, I, was, I was really, because you both have been, you both began when you were so young, and I was curious whether that gives you a sense of shorthand or like comfort with the other person because you n know, or wh wh whether it's like we've both been around this so much that we. <laughs> I think there's definitely the way we both work is very similar. Mm -hmm. And we both have the same sense of enjoyment we get out of it and like directness. And, and there's just like. I think it is probably because we both started acting at a young age and like we'd worked together before even doing the first season of this, like, how many years? Maybe eight years before that? Yeah. I don't know, something like that. Um, but it was like that mad, so it's that mad thing where there is, everyone has like different methods, I suppose, as yeah. to how they, but our methods are very similar huh. and, and they're always supportive of the best yeah. for each other. Like, so it's, it's very good for that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you remember the first scene that you shot of this show where it was like a, I mean, I'm curious what the very first one is, but I'm really curious also, like, the first time you felt like the sort of, oh, this is the back and forth. These are who these people are. Yeah. I feel like the first time I felt that was the breakfast scene in two with Colin. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first one wh where he says touche for the first time and that scene with the strawberries. We were like that day. Everyone was amped. <laughs> like everyone was like, "That was a great scene." We're like, we "We're like, that was great." That felt. I felt like our relationship as Catherine and Peter, and then it kind of gave a sliver of knowing that it wasn't just like he's mean to me. You know, it was like a little more complicated. The reactions are hysterically funny, but so much of the performance is about them not realizing that they're not like trying to be funny, not knowing that they're funny, often never registering that the thing that they are doing is ridiculous. Is it ever hard to like, your brain has to be going like, this is the most absurd thing, but you can't. You know, it's, it's actually weird thinking uh, on it. When we're doing it, I don't think it's absurd at all. Like I just, I, it's weird. I mean, of course you watch it and it's so out there and, you know, my mom watches the show <laughs> and she's like, well, that show's just, as, you know, she loves it, but she's like, it's, you know, it's not for everyone. You know, it's like, it's, it's really out there. And I'm like, is it? Like, I think I'm a little desensitized by sometimes. And um, when we're doing those scenes, I think what works best with the, just how Tony's written it and how we can get away with also like the emotional pull of the payoff at the end and what you really care is like that we're all playing it pretty straight. Like it's very grounded and because we can be so grounded in reality in that way, I think we have the freedom to, to do like farce or outrageous concepts if you're just believing it, right. which I've learned through the comedy of it all. Cause I haven't really done a lot of comedy and I've learned really a great deal on this first and second season. So kind of realize you just have to, be truthful and none of it is actually absurd. I don't know. Do you feel like it's absurd? Yeah, no, it's, I know, it, really. it is like when you when you first read it, you're like, you're like oh, oh my word, crazy. that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But then when it comes to doing it, yeah, no, it's it's as the characters, it's then very, it's like you're playing it almost as like just honest as possible and then that hopefully ends up, you're never trying to sell gags, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also, I liked the pairing of these two clips, first of all, because in that one that we watched before, he's like, you're gonna regret not wanting the tongue lashing and like you get to see the payoff of her regret of the tongue, yeah. It was a bad call on her part. Um, <laughs> uh, but you also get to see just a, a little tiny bit of the arc that I think plays so beautifully over the whole second season of them really both going through this strange journey of like, do I actually like him? I hate him, he's terrible. And in this moment, he is so wounded. 
it feels like this sort of breakthrough moment for him where he's like, wait, I can't actually be this person that I was before. I don't know if the scene had that kind of momentous weight for you, but it has this feeling of, can he actually change? You know what I mean? I'm just, I, how did you, did you feel like this was one of those turning points or did, was this, is it sort of a more, um, Co smooth journey from the beginning. I think it's with Tony's writing. It's it's always a smooth journey, and we get the scripts as we go. So you kind of unpack it as it happens. But it's definitely like this was clearly a, a momentous big scene t when we were shooting it that had a lot going on. But also there's going back to just what you said about. I think the interesting thing this season as well. A lot of the things that Peter predicts and it, and says will happen or, uh, end up being true, yeah. and that's part of the reason why Catherine starts to kind of come back to him a little bit is because it's like all these things that she thought would be easy about ruling and these decisions and whatever were to come suddenly she's like oh even though he's a monster there's also a lot of not intelligence but a lot of <laughs> no he knows the world better there's, than she does because because intelligence there's a because of his because of his weird approach to things and how he's been brought up there's there's also his lack of empathy also makes him a good leader at times yeah. his cutthroatness and and i think that's what she starts to witness and kind of um understand that sometimes his m mad ideas and methods actually do work yeah um <laughs> but also uh yeah so that's it and, and in terms of the hurt and the pain i think that's also a thing that it, where the, the the more ruthless and and egotistical and whatever else catherine gets the more Peter loves her because those he doesn't see as qualities that are bad. He sees them as the qualities that he's more it's charmed by. Their strength. To yeah, him. exactly. And and just sees her as a greater leader and, and love of his life because of that. Yeah. Do you work with an intimacy coordinator on the show? Yeah. We do. Can you talk a little bit about that process? I think that's a... F it's not brand new, but it is becoming something people understand more about like how sets work and how they should work. I'm just curious if you can talk about that process. Yeah, it was my first time working with an int intimacy coordinator on the first season. We had one. I'd never experienced that before. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of sex on our show. Even, I mean, us, but a lot of other it, characters it's as well. everywhere. And also background actors that are kind of just having sex in the hallway. The, that bu the <laughs> busiest <laughs> intimacy coordinator. Yeah, on our show, <laughs> running around all the time. <laughs> you good, you good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'd never worked with her before. Um, we, have, we had a couple, but um, I found it helpful. I mean, obviously the comfortability is something that's safe and making sure the set's closed and just logistical things. Um, but I feel pretty safe with everyone cast-wise in that way. So it wasn't that I needed her for that as much. But she does, we talked about this a little bit last season, but the, the um, technicality of it, of making it look real, I didn't realize that their job is also to make it, look real for TV like how can we sit you know without doing it how can yeah. we make it how can we fake it like you know and so that was helpful to me of like afterwards she'd be like well you need to scoot a little lower you need to like and you're like great tell yeah me yeah yeah thing. yeah um you know do this more do that more so, you know it's like the technicalities but I liked that because it's all about you want to make it look as right as possible yeah I think um the the analogy that made me really understand what it is closest to is like, you would not do a fight on a set without a fight coordinator. Yeah. And it has the same kind of like, it's safety, but it is also like, it would be a disaster. It wouldn't look good if you, you know, yeah. yeah. It's funny, I think also, cause our show is a lot of this way. I haven't thought about it before, but Tony, you know, we cannot ad lib. We are, it is in no way. It's like the words are very much, you have to say it this way. Um, and it's kind of that frees you up in a lot of ways where he doesn't, he's not telling you how to do it, but there is a parameter. And so then scenes like that, there's a parameter that they give you and then you feel totally free, you know, in both, in both ways. So it's kind of something. Uh, I did want to ask, I mean, there's also a great deal of very gruesome violence uh, on the show. I was, the scene from season one that I did, there's a couple that I did want to ask about. One is you throw a dog off the roof. Can you just he talk? He lives. That was, that was science. <laughs> <laughs> he had a parachute. 
Um, <laughs> it was not violent. The dogs, there's nothing. What was it like to uh, shoot a scene where you throw a dog off the roof? It was a fake, it was a fake dog. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, although they did shoot the real, what kind of dog was that? Uh, Pomeranian. Pomeranian. Yeah, they did have a real Pomeranian that they had in a little harness, to, like, for CG, for, like, yeah. CGI he was like, it. effects or like whatever. Yeah, really. He happy. liked the harness? Yeah. I, I think, I think, although when we had, like, the, the stuffed toy version of the Pomeranian, I don't, they did build the parachute as effectively as possible, but there were times where it wasn't as effective as it should have been. Thank God we used a stuffed animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they were tight. we'd be watching and we'd be like, ugh, that wasn't a good landing. <laughs> Those would be fun outtakes. I don't know if Hulu's listening, but you know, just FYI, I think people would enjoy. Uh, I, <laughs> I was also curious, I mean, there's a scene where you torture the entire court and like, I, I'm just, if you can talk about what the set looks like when everyone gets to set and you're like, oh boy, look at all of the torture machines that everyone's going to have to be. We all took a picture in every single one of them. You did? <laughs> of course. <laughs> what was your favorite? Um, oh God. Well, I had the, the, I mean, it was very gruesome with the nail situation. I, I had to get my, what was my, my nail was ripped off. That was, oh, think about that. Um, not great. Yeah, I know. Not great. Those days were pretty, st that was pretty stressful, actually. Really? Yeah. They weren't, like, fun and games. Because we also, it was, you don't think, I mean, the time that we have, you know, it's also a TV show. So, like, what everyone does, the crew and, ev like, it's, these are such huge set pieces. And to think we, they turn it around so quickly and they're building those machines and making sure, you know, it's just, it's a lot. With the, in that time, it wasn't COVID. So, uh, we had a ton of background. And, um... It's just the choreography of that. I think we had to, the roof fell in that day. Oh, fun. Yes. Not on purpose. Yes. No, not on purpose. And we had to shut down filming because the roof of the studio, you know, fell in. Because we shoot in East London in this kind of, you know, it's our, we love it. We love the studio. It's like our home, but it's, you know, it roof falls in, you know, and it's next to a McDonald's. Sure, as you which do. Which is great at times. But it's like, yeah, you know, so it's... it's I think I read it, a thing. There's also a Tesco, and you go to the Tesco in costume. Yeah. I, have you done that? I've never, never done Tesco that. <laughs> okay. I, know, done that. I don't know. Maybe yeah. the other cast. But there is a Tesco right there. Yeah. 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 The chocolate mousse they have is good. I just... They had to run to get yeah. the ice cream at Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you throw a dog off a roof. There's a dead moose on a lawn at some point. There's a bear... I shoot, I shoot the bear. Yeah. But get her a new one. Yeah. Which was... There's a crocodile in season two. <gasps> and I'm, I mean, it's a strange... I, one of the reasons that I like the number of animals on the show is that I feel like it really underlines the strange wildness of the court. Like, you do have this sense of nature is so close. Like, it's such a thin veneer between what the like wide world is and these like in crazy wigs and but you also I think the people are so brutal and the animals are like fit in kind of well I don't know if that makes any sense uh but it, it, everyone's kind of animalistic in yeah. their own way yeah 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 yeah, you yeah. Have, to have to survive I know us, yeah we've dressed up as what I think Florence had beaver yeah you know the little beaver Makeup and yes, yeah, a lot of animal things. A lot Butterflies. Of really never thought about that. I guess Tony, you know, there's some comparison there. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting the survival thing because that's what mm. through throughout season two for a lot of a lot of the other characters, it's it's all about them positioning who they the out, trying to predict the outcome of what's going to happen. Will Catherine succeed in this yeah. coup? Will Peter regain power? And trying to like hedge their bets on who's the who's the best outcome and where where they stand depending on who wins overall. So it's, it's really fun for all the other characters as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you do get this great, um, they become fascinating kind of like, you watch how the wind is blowing, like who seems to like, eh, maybe we should go like make good with the other side because it's looking rough lately. Uh, I mean, I asked you which one of you breaks the most, but I am also curious who is hardest to make break on set because it seems like so many of the... Adam. Adam. Adam, who plays? Uh, Archie. Yeah. Yeah, Adam Godley, who plays Archie. He, he's totally in on the joke, and he fun, but he will always And do you try to, like, mess him up? It must be tempting. 
No, I don't try to mess him up. We don't try to mess anyone up because I think we're all kind of teetering on this. <laughs> like, you know, we're teetering on it already, but um, he's very, he's very in it. He's yeah. like the sweetest man in the world. Yeah. yeah. He's the best. But, yeah, he doesn't laugh as much, I guess, right? Doug really, Doug tries to make everyone laugh. He's Doug. the one that tries to make everyone laugh. Really? Yeah, Bellamento who plays Doug. Yeah. Doug. He has a great... Um, He's always doing noises and crazy, like... Noises? Yeah, yeah a lot of like drunken heavy, noises. Like heavy breathing and belching and, like, swallowed burps. Yeah, and like, <laughs> like, huge takes. Like, like uh, just, like, we're all just, like, howling. Yeah, he's, like, farting, belching. I feel like there was a scene in the first episode of the first series that we'd, we'd shot in a in a country house and then when we had the stages we went back when we were shooting the rest of the the season the following year or whatever we tried to reshoot the scene mm -hmm. but Doug was added to the scene as one of the characters in it oh, but because yeah. he was doing all his like mm, <laughs> breathing <laughs> stuff none of us could keep a straight yeah. face and they ended up using the old version of the yeah, scene like, in the episode because they were like this new version's yeah. rubbish basically <laughs> because yeah. we, none of us could stop giggling the whole time uh, so I professional. very professional and it really <laughs> when you watch the season you'll get to know like oh my gosh the noises because they are they're very good yeah. they're very good this season um, so season two you know I feel like you get you do start to drift farther from the historical record not that the show was ever pretending to be accurate mm -hmm. but it feels a little bit like as things drift farther from the characters in that, you know, if you read the Wikipedia page, you become very clear, like, that's not them. You do, they sort of become more themselves. The show becomes its own kind of separate entity. But I'm curious if, as you have lived with the characters, like, you have to, do you ever look up and be like, what would they actually be doing right now? If they were alive right now? No, I mean, like, <laughs> At this the moment in their lives. The greatest panel you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> um, in, in terms of... Re in terms yeah, of like, you know, because at, by this point, you're so far from, like, where they would have been. Yeah. Yeah. Ish. 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 I think it's still as... I think the history and the... And the you know, history... I, I think it's kind of the same balance as season one. Because there's a lot of things that did happen. Yeah. I mean, I, I think... Catherine's rule, everything I'm trying to do this season, she tried to do as well. Yeah. So that's all kind of based in truth, yeah. but yeah. I but know. In terms of like developing the character yeah, and like lesson. going back and being like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. real Peter did yeah, this yeah. and so I could try and do that in a scene. No, no. because I, well, I, never, we, I, I personally never did that right from the beginning yeah. of shooting it because it was something that wasn't particularly, because it wasn't based on historical fact. It wasn't like we were trying to recreate ghosts of these people and be authentic to them in many ways. It was, it was never something that was necessary. And I think that stemmed a little bit from, I wouldn't have had the confidence to do that apart from on the favorite, they didn't do it. Yeah. They were like, there was no like, oh, we're gonna read all about these characters and learn. They're unsaid and being like, you wouldn't have yeah, the, yeah. Playing the real, real characters, life I had done that. Very, very but. ugly, so. So, so obviously yeah, no, very I'm, far from, yeah. Very yeah. Far. So, I don't know, yeah, so it was never, like, a thing. So now I don't feel the need to go back and do that. I am, it does seem like, in spite of the fact that you're not, they're not at all the historical people, I do feel like watching this series, you nevertheless think about the actual historical people in a different, like, you think about them as people. And I, how does... Do you ever look at then other, you know, period dramas or like when you're thinking about historical, like do you feel like you have a different relationship with sort of these major iconic figures from the past, like understanding of like, yeah, that was a really uncomfortable corset she must have been wearing the whole time. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, I think, well, um, I know people, you know, compare, there's, th there's been a lot of period shows that are kind of have this modern twist and, and, and even before, I mean, I remember seeing Marie Antoinette, like Sophia's Marie Antoinette for the first time, which I think just had its like anniversary, right? I read that huge article and it was so fun to read. And I was, I don't know how old, I think I was like 10 or 11 when I saw it in theaters with my grandmother. I remember it was like the first like nude scene I saw, like Kirsten's like bum. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, it was the first nude scene she shot, I'm reading it in the article. But, um, 
that sh like the way that Sophia that was so above ahead of its time I think in a way because that movie's such a classic an and like people film, now yeah. love it but then back then it was so she wouldn't have people done hated this it. yeah they're like there's converse in there it's like well hey she has a point of view and she's humanizing her and I think that that's what we're you know, in our way, Tony and I talk about it a lot of Catherine. We're doing our version of Catherine, and it's, it's still in the spirit of Catherine. And Tony's done, inc like, a ton of research on the century and of Catherine when he was doing the play also. And um, So it's based in that, but you have to shake it up and make these people people of our world, you know. And, um, and I, so I, I don't really, yeah, I really have never read much on her. <laughs> But I love her. I know that she invented the roller coaster. I learned that. I was like, that sounds very fun. <laughs> she sounds fun. very fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I should, uh, we should talk about the fact that Gillian Anderson is in this season. Uh, she plays your mother. What did you have to talk about with her about like what this relationship was going to be like, how this was going to sort of go as b the, the interactions between the two of you? Um, it goes to a place that you guys are not going to expect it to go to. I a uh, hundred million percent bet that. <laughs> I didn't guys. expect it. Yeah, that's right. No, we none of us did. Um, she has an incredible, incredible arc. It's a good season, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's written really beautifully and very nuanced with the relation. I mean, a mother-daughter relationship. It's very specific. And I think you get to see Catherine's need for wanting to be perfect for her mother. And Jillian just is, the comedic timing is beyond. I mean, sex education, she's so great in that. She's so funny. Um, and I, all of us, we're all very comfortable with each other. And so it's like, we're all silly and kind of goofy. And then when Jillian would come on set, the first time we all were very, I was like, including me, we were like very much on our best Trying behavior. Trying to hold it together, yeah. But then she's really silly and goofy and so then we all kind of were like okay like great <laughs> you're a part of us um she just when we heard that she wanted to do it and was a fan of the show I mean I was like what I couldn't believe it like mommy <laughs> oh, that's so exciting <laughs> yeah that must feel so valid like I, I'm sure you have heard from other people who are fans of the show do, who is your favorite person who has come up to you and been like this is great Someone unexpected. Uh, the, uh, b before jump, jumping back to that, I got Jason Isaacs to play my dad as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's season. Yeah. season. Um, and so that was wonderful because he was like brilliant. And it, like yes. we talk about Peter the Great so much and the shadow that he cast on Peter the Third and all this stuff. So to have him come in and like capture that. Wait, but he's dead. Really How does he show up? It's it's TV. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that's the fun thing about this I the season, I guess, is like you're dealing with your parenting issues, we're dealing with, and then we're also parenting together, so it's like our parents and also parenting being un kind of unraveled in, yeah. Uh, who do you like to watch the show? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio <gasps> said that he liked A great him. fan. Yes. <laughs> yep. yep. Okay. Cool. Well, we are almost out of time. This has been so lovely, and I want to thank you both so much for your time. Obviously, everyone needs to watch the show. It comes out uh, November 19th, and uh, please, you know, hashtag Vulture Festival. Let us know how great uh, these two people both were, because they were fantastic. Uh, have a great rest of the festival. Thank you. Thank you.